So this one is, um, okay, so I always uh, forget to synchronize myself. So if I want to write something, so if you guys remember when we talked about, uh, I'm missing one of these. We, we talked about short circuit last week. Short circuit calculation, we did short circuit by hand, and we talked about current delivering fuses. This topic, guys, can make you a lot of money and make your job more secure if you know it. There's a lot of people in the industry who would love you, as I say, to be a drafter for the rest of your life through a couple of receptacles here on lights and tag and blah, blah, blah. You guys have already done that, right? Everybody tagged and threw receptacles and equipment, tagged them and circuit them. Done. Now let's go to the next level. How do you, when you design the system, how do you analyze the system and make sure it's safe enough from an over competition condition? That chapter will help you do that, plus the, uh, plus the SKM software. So equipment and conductor short circuit protection. Every, like we talked last, last time, guys, every piece of equipment in the electrical industry have a value called withstand value. Very simple. If I am a switch gear, I will have a value, an amp value, that's called my withstand value. That's how much heat and magnetic force can I handle at a switch gear before I turn into a big ball of fire. Does that, it's sim as simple as that. We call it withstand rating, withstand rating of equipment. How much current, short circuit current and ground fault current can I handle before I turn into a big ball of fire and start shaking? So. Like we talked about yesterday, Jeff, we said short circuit can have two, two components. Have one is the magnetic force, shaking equipment, and two, heat, burning equipment. So that's what we're going to talk for equipment and conductors. Equipment and conductors. Electric equipment has a withstand. So if you leave your print chat without understanding the withstand rating for equipment, so I, I'm going to highlight the word equipment that's a switch gear that panels. That's MCC, MCC, all these have a withstand rating. What's a withstand rating? Let me give you a value. I have 65 kilo amp withstand rating, meaning this switch gear can handle withstand for a short amount of time, typically a couple of cycles, this amount of energy, heat, as well as this amount of magnetic field. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understood that one. See how easy that is? Okay, this is a withstand rate. Conductors, when you have a conductor, take this, 500 kcm. 500 kcm conductor, guys, can carry 380 amps continuously, forever, right? 380 amps. Now, um, this particular boy that can carry 380 amps continuously based on the certain circumstances, I can make it, I can make the 500 kcm carry, that's where the, um, the withstand rating for conductor, the withstand rating for conductor. I can make that baby carry 10,000 amps, and I'm throwing this value, 10,000 amps for a short amount of time, seconds, milliseconds. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? That's called withstand rating of cables. The cables have to withstand the short circuit until the overconduction device trips. Gentlemen, we're talking about seconds and milliseconds. That's what we're talking about. Seconds and milliseconds, not minutes. We don't, withstand ratings are measured in milliseconds and seconds, right? Full load current is measured in hours and days. Does that make sense? When I say 380 amp, this is forever, forever, I guess. You can get that 380 amps from 500 kcm conductor anytime you want, no problem. 10,000 amp, this cable, and I'm throwing this number out of the hat here, pulling it, can handle this number for only a short amount of time, milliseconds, cycles, and seconds. Cool? That's called the withstand rating. Um, understand the important necessary code, deceptions. Um, and these are all the NEC code that talks about interrupting rating. When you hear the word guys, interrupting rating, you talk about circuit breaker. Every time you hear the word interrupting rating, that's a circuit breaker of use. When you hear the word withstand rating, that's a conductor or an equipment. Cool, withstand erupted. <coughs> Typically the same value. I can have a 60, a 65 kilo amp withstand rating for a switch gear and erupting rating for a circuit breaker inside the switch gear. So typically they're the same. Okay, but the withstand mean you would you don't interrupt, you just stand there and, and handle that heat and the shaking. Right? Interrupt 
interrupt, you're going to, you're going to, not going to stand there. If you're a circuit breaker and you see a 65 kilo amp, you're not going to sit there wait for it. You're going to interrupt it as fast as you are set to do that. As fast as you're set to do that. So that's what uh, the code talks about. Available short circuit current, current limitation, effective ground bonding, temperature limitation of conducting. <coughs> All these guys are, effect, are in the NEC code book. Interrupting rating, and you're going to see the uh, temperature rating of conductor. Do you guys remember when we were saying 90 degree temperature um, and 75 degree and 60 and all this stuff? Do you now do you understand why we have temperature rating for conductor? Because they need to carry continuously the load and for a short amount of time handle the heat generated by the short circuit. The heat generated by the short circuit. So that's a few things that you're going to uh, encounter. Um, amp square, this is one of the most terms, uh, used terms in the industry. They call it amp second squared as I squared S. Amp second squared. This is energy. The amount of energy, uh, Zach, that a short circuit can pump into your switch gear when you have a short circuit, equal very simple. Take the short circuit, square it, and multiply it by how many seconds you want to let this short circuit sit in your switch gear. Simple. What's the short circuit? 65,000 amp, Chad. Cool. Square it, 65,000 times 65,000. How many seconds do you want it to sit, Chad? Well, most of the equipment are, are, are rated in cycles. So three cycles means three divided by 60, one twentieth of a second. So multiply it by one twentieth of a second, that's the amount of heat energy that this piece of equipment can handle before it turns into a big ball of fire. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? That's what we're going to be talking about, too. Uh, I'm going to do some calculations, guys, for the withstand rating for conductors. Really cool. For copper conductors and aluminum, um, time before being damaged. If you have a conductor like this, and this is my copper conductor, and you have the insulation on it, right here this is your insulation around that conductor right that's your insulation around that conductor now this conductor they have that withstand suppose it's a cover conductor you can do calculation to determine what's the highest amount of energy that or current this conductor can handle before the insulation start melting right and creating a fire that's the damage curve they call it a damage curve so withstand rating is associated with the term called damage curve. When I say this conductor can handle 10,000 amps, this means if I go four, you have to always say for how long? For three cycles, for three cycles, 10,000 amps for three cycles. If I go higher than three cycles, this conductor will burn. If I go higher than 10,000 amps, this conductor will burn. Can you see that? This conductor will burn either if you go higher or longer. Two factors when it comes to the short circuit. How high the, the value is and how long you will allow the short circuit to sit inside your conductor before that big fat fuse ahead of it, right? We have to have a fuse here. Before that boy here ahead of it trip. That has to trip. What's going to protect your conductor? Don't open. What protects the conductor is a fuse or a circuit breaker ahead of it. So if I set the circuit breaker at 10 kilo amp and interrupt at three cycles, or less, I am guaranteed that this fuse, right? Fuse set at 10 kilo amps, three cycles. The conductor can withstand 10 kilo amps, three cycles, right? Um, so the fuse will trip at the right value and at the right speed before the conductor turn into a big ball of fire. Typically, there is a there is a um, you know, you don't want to sit it like this will probably will be set at one cycle to trip at one cycle faster than faster than that. Any comment, any question, guys, about the withstand rating of equipment and conductors? Equipment and conductors. That's what you're going to be doing with your friend chat, uh, not tomorrow, on Wednesday. <clears throat> there are charts in that to determine the withstand rating for conductors. <clears throat> it will tell you if you have number 10 can handle uh, 20,000 amps for a couple of cycles. There are charts. You guys are one of the lucky ones. They're going to have your friend SKM, PTW, uh, on Wednesday when I say pick your 500 KCM conductor from the software. You're going to pick the conductor, guys. And when you do coordination, 
The minute that you pick the conductor, the software will assign a line for it, a time, um, uh, a time current curve, time current curve. And that time current curve is actually the chart. It's instead of using the chart, it will give you a curve that looks like this. And this curve is called damage, damage curve for the 500, 500 kcm conductor. Damage curve for the 500 kcm conductor. Very visual, very nice to use, very easy. So if the damage curve is here and your fuse is sits right underneath it, that's how you coordinate. Look at this. This is my fuse. This is my 400 amp fuse. I'm sitting it right underneath the damage curve, which means if I have a short circuit right here, what's going to happen? It's going to go up, up, up. Now we hit the fuse. What, what do you think when you hit the fuse? The fuse is going to start opening. Right at this point here, the fuse is going to start opening, opening. Oh, by the time it hits the blue, the fuse will be what? Completely open, which means the damage curve have not been touched. My conductor will not smooth. My so see how they do the whole coordination and, and, and software is really easy. Visual. Visual. Any comments, guys? Any questions? See how, how they do the coordination? <clears throat> now, if you leave your friend chat not knowing the following, when you have um, a short circuit, there are two forces, like we talked about many times, that affect you. One force is called the magnetic force, and the other force is called what? Thermal. Every time you have a short circuit, should we go to the lab and make a short circuit, a little short circuit on the 15 amp? All right, they just take the phase phase, or phase neutral, tie them together, flip the switch. Every time you tie phase to neutral or phase to phase, you're going to have two forces, bad forces acting on you. <coughs> the magnetic, magnetic shape. You sit there and shaking your shake your equipment. Is that bad or good when you shake your conductors? The first thing that's gonna happen when you shake your conductor is Jeff. Lugs. Remember that conductor is sitting here. What's gonna to happen to your lug sitting here? Loose lug. Do you know what loose lug is? High impedance. You know what high impedance is? Arc. You know what arc is? Fire. Bad news. So that's a bad news. How about thermal? Thermal is heat. You're heating and heating and heating. If your equipment is, is not rated to handle this heat, you're gonna turn into a big ball of fire. Or, if it doesn't turn into a book of fire, it's going to loosen the connectors. And that also escalates later on into an arc. So bad news. I'm not going to convince you that these are bad news. Okay, so these are what we have guys about the short circuit. They also threw the 10 and the 15 tabs. And the reason why we do the, uh, the tab rules, I have a really nice picture. Again, I talk about tabs in the industrial. They have a nice picture that I want to show you what are the rules for the tabs. When you have a conductor, so here's a conductor like this, and you're going to come over here and you tab it to feed a panel. This is a 500 kcm. This one is a 4 ohm. This cable is called a tab. Everybody understand what a tab? The reason why it's a tab because there's no over temperature device ahead of it that's rated to protect it. That this guy, this 400 amp, is protecting that boy here, right? It's rated to protect that, that cable. Now, I went there on lugs and tie it and went and to protect it. So when I have a short circuit now, this 400 amp must protect both cables, right? Can you guys see that? This uh, from short circuit must protect this cable and must also protect this cable from short circuit. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that one. That's why we threw the tabs here. That's where we threw the tabs here. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Very simple. You have a short circuit. Your conductors and equipment must handle two forces, thermal and magnetic. The rest is, is procedures. The rest are procedures. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so these are, this is just a big fancy word to tell you that uh, if you have a, a, a 4,000 amp switch here, here's my 4,000 amp. Uh, 480 slash 277, um, 85 kilo amp. That's a fancy word. I have a 4,000 amp switch gear, right? My switch gear, 4,000 amp, that's a continuous current that you can pull out of this circuit breaker, right? Now, the circuit breaker is have an interrupting rating 
So you can see 85,000 amp interrupting rating for the circuit breaker. The bus, the bus is, right? There's a bus here. That bus here on the logs also have an, uh, a withstand, withstand rating. This is interrupt rating. So you can see the same rating for the buses, the copper or aluminum withstand. Sit there, handle the pressure. For the circuit breaker, it's interrupt. When you see it, interrupt. Can you have thumbs up, Chad? Understand what this manufacturers, when they make equipment, guys, they size all the competition device to protect them bears. If it withstands 85, then we can go as high as 85 with it. If it's if, if this equipment can withstand 65, can I put an 85 ahead of it? You can if you don't care about big ball of fire coming out of it. So that's what the manufacturer of switch gear switchboards do. They give you an interrupting rating and withstand rating. And, and these two values, these two values guys can decide the um, decide the thermal and the magnetic energy that this equipment can handle. Thermal and magnetic energy. This is where you, your big UL comes a big deal. That's where you all say, okay, Jeff, you, this is your switch gear and you pretend that your switch gear can handle 85. Yep, we're gonna go inject 85,000 amps, right? Inject. They have uh, uh, current generators. Generate 85,000 amp. Dump it right across the primary side of the switch right here and see if it's going to trip. And how fast? Would it trip? And how fast? And then they give it the UL listing right there. Big label on, on the equipment. UL listed. 85,000 amp switch here. Withstand and interrupting. Andrew, my friend, withstand interrupting, withstand for equipment and conductors, interrupting for fuses and circuit breakers. And almost always they match. Almost always they match. Okay, so that's um, that's your uh, equipment and all this good stuff. Okay, now before we start, we'll take you back into Mr. Ryman's days and some of you who are not with us that with Ryman, with others. Here's what very simple circuit, guys. This is a two-phase circuit or a two two hot circuit, 15 amp. We looked at these guys before, if you remember in the in the residential, the same thing. Very simple, very simple. I have a 24 ohm load, a 15 amp fuse, a number, uh, and let's just say number 14 conductor here. Very simple, A W G, right? And um, and this is 15. So if you do your math. Look at this, guys. You do the math. The impedance is 24. Here's my 24. Plus the impedance of the conductor. Each one of these conductors has a little bit of impedance in it, right? So that's why I have one, two, three. Where's the third one coming from? From the source. The source also have an impedance. So if you divide the voltage by all the impedances because they're in series, you end up with 9.99 amp. A 15 amp fuse will protect you from, from that one, and you're good to go, right? Everybody can see that? What I would like you guys to, this is how, how to justify the short circuit. I would like you to look at these values here, the very small impedances of the conductors. The conductors have a very short, very small impedances as well as the source, okay? This is what we call the normal operating condition of the circuit. 15 amp lighting circuit pulling 10 amps. Is that okay? Yep, cool. You can live forever like this. Normal operating condition of a circuit. Normal normal operating condition. Cool. And just and I have a, a 10 amps here, and I can pull up to 15 amps. I'm good to go. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand the normal operation condition. Okay. Now let's go to another condition. This is overload condition. Overload condition. I have a heater. This is was a heater. Now. Um, my friend Aaron went and added another heater, plug it into the outlet. Two more heaters, right? If you guys take two more heaters in parallel, do you guys remember what happened if you put two conductors in parallel? You cut the impedance by half from the old days of, um, you cut the impedance by half. So when you put two loads in parallel, you cut the impedance by half. That's a basic, uh, basic electricity, fundamentals. So now the impedance is 12. Same thing. Look what happened. So now, instead of, uh, um, this should be 12, right? This value here should be 12. So now, if you, here's my 12 plus the impedance of all the conductors, get you this. Now look what, how much current you're getting out of the system. 20 amp. 
This is gentleman is called what? Overload condition. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand what overload condition is. You overloaded the circuit. When you overload condition, guys, the fuse will trip. Here's the curve. This is how the curve of the fuse looks like. Here's my fuse. This is your 15 amp fuse. This is my 15, 15 amp. And this is current I, this is time. Now look what happened. I have a 15 amp fuse. Now up to this point, Jeff, my friend, if you go here, this is my 15 amp. So if you guys, if you're in this area, if you're in this area, you can 15 or less, your fuse can pull as many, uh, it, it can live forever. That This is the time here. You can go forever pulling 15 amps or less. Take this. Now you pull 20 amps. I pull 20 amps. Right, I'm right here. This is my 20 amps. Look what happened. One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five, six. So right in here, if it's an overload, typically it's not in seconds really, it's in minutes. If it's overload condition, within, I'm just going to say 10 minutes, within 10 minutes, what's going to happen to your fuse? Open. Why it opens? Because it hits the curve. And right here, that's how long it, how, how it takes. From the time it opens, it since it starts opening to the time it opens, say it took a minute for the fuse to open, right? So within 10 minutes, my fuse will open. My fuse will open and protect my conductors. Remember, my conductors were number 14. Protect my conductors from being burned, from being burned. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, guys, about overload? Now, look what happened. Uh, do you guys remember the damage curve for your conductor? Here's the damage curve for your conductor, right in here. Here's my number 14. This is called damage curve, right? And my conductor is going all the way up here. Now, what happened if the fuse did not open? So you can see what happened? At, at about an hour, I'm just using my imagination here, at about an hour, smoke start coming out of your conductor. These conductors would not because they're rated slightly different, but at about an hour, you start smelling smoke coming out of your conductor. If the fuse did not open. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand the overload condition. Okay, so that's your overload condition. This is justifying why the current jet goes higher when you add loads in, in series. Every time you add, if I add another load here, 24, guys, what do you guys think the interior would be? It will be 24 divided by 3, right? We'll get you what? 8. So the current will go even higher. Now let's say Aaron still doesn't get it. Let's just add another one here, another load here. So that becomes 24 divided by one, two, three, four, four, right? Four. What would that give you? Six. Do the math on the six. The current keep going higher. That's what overloading your system is. Overloading your system. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions about overloading your system? So that's an overload condition. So your conductors have to be able to handle overload condition until the fuse opens. Now the last step is short circuit. Short circuit is the worst of the worst. Now, Jeff went and took a jumper and jumped around phase A and phase B. Can you guys see that? Right in here. I bypassed the, the load. When you bypass the load, guys, remember the impedance. When you put the impedance is zero, that little conductor almost. So your impedance right now is very close to what? The load impedance. Close to zero. The load impedance is close to zero. Okay, so here's plus zero here. So the only impedance in the system, the only impedance <coughs> in the system is this one, the source, as well as the conductors, right? Because the load impedance is gone. So you're dividing by a very, very small number, and guess what you got here? You got yourself into 80, uh, right? 80, 80 kilo amps. That's a little bit high. 8 kilo amps. Now that's what we call short circuit, right? That's what we call short circuit, 80 kilo amps. Now your fuse, under these circumstances, your fuse here must be rated for 80, um, 85 kilo amps, higher than 80. So they have 80, my fuse rated for 85, guess what my fuse are gonna do? Trip, open. They're gonna trip, open. 
So curve wise, guys, this is how the curve looks like. And the reason why I'm drawing the curves, not because I like to exercise my graphic, my drafting skills, because on Wednesday, that's what you guys are going to be seeing on the software. The software will be using graphs. The graphs, okay, so here's my fuse here, sitting my fuse right in here, my conductor damage curve. Remember that my conductor, this is my number 14, conductor damage curve. Now let's draw a short circuit. Short circuit is right in here. Here's the 80,000 amp. Now look, uh, Jamie, my friend, right in here. Now fuse start opening. At this point, my fuse will open. This one typically is one cycle. What the heck is a one cycle, Chad? One over 60th of a second. One over 60th of a second. Anybody can can imagine or see one sixtieth of a second? Can you feel a one sixtieth of a second? So fast. You have a short circuit, your fuse is going to open so fast. Versus, remember the first condition, guys, when we have a 20 amp, we went all the way up to here, and we opened at, did I say one hour last time? One hour. So if you overload it, it took me one hour to open on an overload, depending how high the overload, right? Versus short circuit, one twentieth of a second. Do you guys see the gravity? Everybody can see the gravity. Okay, let's take another overload condition. Suppose that you have 100 amp. You're pulling 100 amp out of it. Bam, 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 bam. Come over here. Here's my time. Let's just say one minute. Took you one minute. All these graphs, guys, are coming from the manufacturer. I'm throwing numbers here, but these graphs for the uh, fuses are coming from the manufacturers. Your job, Andrew and Darren, is to take the graph of the fuse and the graph provided from the manufacturer based on the size of the fuse of the manufacturer and the voltage and the graph of the cable provided by the manufacturer of the cable based on the size of the fuse and the type of the, the size of the conductor and the type copper aluminum and who the manufacturer is. These two are library, coming from library. And make sure when you put them, put them exactly like Chad is showing you, so they don't burn. That's what we call it overcurrent protection coordination. Coordination and protection coordination for cables and so forth. Any comments, guys? Any questions about these? That's how you protect from short circuit. That's how you protect from short circuit. Any comments? Any questions? So that's why they call them, Aaron, my friend, they call them overcurrent protection because you could have an overload. Or you could have a short circuit or a ground fault. Now, how about ground fault? Let's throw a ground fault here as long as we're on it. Suppose I, I have, instead of touching this one, touch a pipe, went to ground, one of these. Typically, ground faults are smaller. So let's just say when it was a quarter of 80. What's a quarter of 80? 20K. So I have a 20K. Here's my 20K. My 20K is going to come right in this area here. I'm going to go up to here and here. Now I'm going to trip and let's just say for the heck of it, three cycles. I'm going to, or three cycles are one twentieth of a second. If I have a ground fault, I'm going to trip in one twentieth of a second. Instead, one sixtieth of a second longer. But look how, by how, how far. Can you guys see the difference between the overload, the ground fault, and the short circuit? The only difference, Jeff, two differences. The value goes higher, right? And the fuse drips faster. Can you guys see that? The value went higher from 20 to 20K to 80K, 20 amps, 20,000 amps to 80,000 amps higher. Um, this is overload condition, ground fault condition, short circuit, and restrictive, uh, respectively to these uh, values, the fuse will trip faster on the higher current. The higher the current, the faster the fuse will trip. Makes a lot of sense, guys, because higher current means what? Huge amount of energy that you need to interrupt. Huge amount of energy that you need to interrupt. If you gentlemen understand this on Wednesday, you're going to enjoy the software. Really is. Yes. That's why this chapter, I said, really nice to go over it before we go over the, the software. Okay, so that's my ground fault. Um, Open circuit, open circuit, the other condition for open circuit, that's when you lose a fuse. When you have an over, open circuit condition, guys, the impedance is infinity. Everybody knows the infinity symbol here. When you divide any number by infinity, you got yourself a big fat zero n. 
So in an open circuit, open circuit condition, there is no current going on. So um, which I always say the safest, the safest circuit is the circuit that's not working. The safest circuit is the circuit that's not working. If, if, if the circuit is, if the fuses are blown, the circuit is safe. It's dead. You know what I mean? So if you have an open, open uh, circuit like this one, nothing will run. But be very careful. You still, from a safety point of view, you still have hot conductor here. In this case, this is phase coming from phase A, phase B, or hot one, hot two. So does the the fuse do anything if you have an um, if you have an an over uh, an open phase like this? No, not really. Except in three phase, they will open because you overwhelm one fuse. Well, over over you overwhelm one fuse. Take this. Here's a fuse, and here's another fuse, and a third fuse on a three-phase system. Now this is my three, this is my 30 horsepower 480 motor. Okay, I'm running, running, running. Guess what happened, Jeff? Right while I was running, I have an open circuit condition. Uh, let's just say that this fuse open, just one fuse. Can you guys see that? One fuse open. Out of the three, a three phase load, then the current here, the current on each one of these, the current on each one of these, oh, doesn't want to erase now, okay. The current on each one of these will go 173, I think, percent more. 173 percent more. So you have 73 percent more, 73 percent more current on each phase. Now, if this fuse was 100 amps, and now I'm pulling 173 amps out of it, what's, what, do you, what condition do you have? Overload, the fuse will trip. That's called single phasing. If you have a three phase system, and you lost one phase, that's single phasing. The motor will continue to run if it's slightly loaded, not fully loaded. They start pulling more current out of the other two phases to compensate for the loss of one phase. And eventually, the fuses will open on overload condition. And remember, also, there's um, for fuses for motors, we're going to have the overload. The overload will trip too. You have an overload will trip on an overload condition because you're overloading the other two phases. Any question there's about open circuit? So open circuit in single phase not a big deal. Nothing will happen in a three phase. It's a bad news because it's created overload condition. Any comments? Any questions? Any comments, any questions about that? Okay, we talked about the withstand rating, my friends. <clears throat> um, we'll talk about the uh, conductor withstand rating or short circuit, that how much it, it can, uh, the, this is the value I want you guys to, um, to understand. Conductor heat, this is the amount of heat a conductor can carry and withstand before it starts burning. Okay, so Jeff, my friend, I'm going to take my example here. I'm going to go put this one into the same thing, 400 amp. This is my conductor, which is my baby here is, uh, um, I need uh, this one 500 kcm, 500 kcm. The short circuit, I have a short circuit right here, guys, in this conductor, and this short circuit is, let's just say it's 21, Kilo amp, 21 kilo amp, right? Can you guys see it? 21 kilo amp. Let's see how much energy, heat, this 20 amp is going to generate in this conductor. Piece of cake. Take the 21. I need somebody to help me with this. Multiply by 21. Uh, don't forget that these are thousands. So 21, 0, 0, 0. Multiplied by 21, 0, 0, 0. Multiplied by. Okay. Now, I need the circuit breaker to trap. Give me a tripping. A trip, they have to trip within three cycles. Three cycles, three over 60. Okay, so I'm going to make the circuit breaker trip within three over 60 is what? 120. Who's going to do the math for me? Take 21,000, multiply by 21,000, divide by 20, basically. 21,000, multiply by 21,000, divide by 20. And that's the amount, of, um, the amount of energy that this conductor has to handle if it... 20, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 22 million 
um, the amount of energy that this conductor have to handle, and the amount of energy that this conductor have to handle. The amount of energy that this conductor have to handle. Thank you. So that's the called I squared, um, I squared T, I squared T. And what's the unit? The unit is M squared second, which is basically representation of the energy. M squared second. So now, Jeff, when you buy this conductor from the manufacturer, the damage curve of this conductor have to be able to handle this amount of energy. For how long, though? Only three cycles. Only one twentieth of a second. Only one twentieth of a second. Same thing for equipment. This could be a switch gear. Same calculation. Switch gear. Any comments, guys? Any questions about the I squared T? I squared T? Any comments? Any questions? So when we start doing the coordination, Jeff, you're going to see I squared T all the time. The higher the I squared T, the more arc flash, arc blast you're going to encounter. The higher the R squared T, the more arc flash, arc blast you're going to encounter, the more serious the short will be, the more likelihood that you're going to kill an electrician. Cool? So that's what I squared T is, um, the amount of energy. Okay. Time withstand, calculating time withstand from table. Okay, so taking, um, uh, what they're doing, guys, is they're taking, same calculation, they're taking, uh, just use the formula. This is example that they're using for you. Very easy, very simple. Um, a number 10, I have a number 10 conductor. This conductor is number 10. Number 10, okay. A number 10 conductor, from the manufacturer, can you guys see this number 10 conductor? The, the number 10 conductor, the manufacturer uh, telling me can handle 246 amps. Look at it, for what? The most important thing, it doesn't matter how much it's gonna handle it, for how long? For uh, five seconds, five seconds, okay? So this is the what the manufacturers are telling you, they say, Joe, my friend, if you have this number 10 conductor, you buy our conductor by design, my conductor, the number 10. Number 10, typically, how much current number 10 can handle? 30 amps. This boy is 30 amp conductor, right? Typically 30 amps, right? But for short circuit, can handle up to 246 for how long, though? Five seconds. Five seconds. Let me put the five. So five seconds. Okay. Now, in order to find in order to find the heat, how much energy that conductor can handle, very easy. Look at this, Jeff. Take the I squared T. Here's the manufacturer. Again, not me, not Chad. The manufacturer are uh, telling me that this is the uh, you take the four 246 amps that this conductor can handle, multiply it by five. That will get you the amount of energy that this conductor can handle as three. Uh, 3,002, um, uh, three, 300 and let's just say, uh, 300, yeah, 302,580. That's the amount of energy that this conductor can handle. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? That's in up to five seconds, up to five seconds. All these values, where the heck did you come up with these values, Chad? These are manufacturer provided. Five seconds. Typically five seconds you want to handle it for five seconds. Now here's my question for you, gentlemen. How about for one second? How much current can this, um, uh, this conductor carry for one second? Okay, for one second. That's what they're doing in your map. This is for five seconds. For one second, look what they do. You take the time here. Oops. Um, time equal uh, this big value here, which is 302, comma, um, 580. Divide this, because I'm looking for the time. Divide this by what? Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the current. How much current? How much current can I carry for one second? For one second. So then divide this by one, because I'm looking for one, and take the square root of this. One more time. If I'm looking for one second, take this big fat number, 
divided by one, because the one second is the time, take the time here, one second, is take the square root of it. So take the square root of this number. Can anybody take the square root of this number and give me what the number is? The square root of 302580. 550. 550. 550 amps. So, Aaron, for one second, not for only one second, I can make this conductor, number 10, carry how much current? 550 amps. One second. But for five seconds, how much this conductor can carry? 246. Now forever, forever, how much this conductor can carry? 30 amps. Can you guys see the difference? The conductor can carry different amount of amps for different amount of time. Typically, that's the continuous <laughs> That's how we size the equipment. This is how we size the short circuit for these equipment, the short circuit for these equipments. So long story short, and I'm going to give you a quick break here. Long story short, gentlemen, this will trip you to something called the damage curve for the conductor. What you're looking at is the damage curve for the conductor. When you guys, uh, on Wednesday, when I start using SKM, here's what you're going to see. Very simple, very easy, straightforward, no gimmicks, nothing. You're going to see the following, my friend. You're going to see a curve like this for conductor number 10. That's it. And your job is to put the fuse underneath it. If you put the fuse here higher, right, this means this conductor is going to be burned. If you put it underneath it to the left of the curve, this means your conductor will not be burned. That's a simple and it's easy. So right here, a fuse right here is bad. This fuse here, if it's sitting right here, is good. How how do you know? Huh? Uh, burned as in melted, never being able to use again. If you hit the damage, a damage curve meaning the insulation has melted. So can you use it again if the insulation is melted? Not legally. You can, I guess, but not legal. Yeah, when it, it's a damage curve, meaning the insulation has melted, or and the copper has evaporated even. If you continue, what's going to happen? If you continue a short circuit, first the insulation will melt, second the copper will evaporate, it will will burn, right? If you continue, it's like arcing, you know, you continue with it. But hopefully, what you're hoping is the circuit breaker will trip before you get into this this value. Circuit breaker will trip before you get into this value. Okay, here's what the calculation that they did, guys, exactly what I did it, and you take the square root of it, and you're going to find 550 amps for this conductor number 10. For what? How many seconds? One second. So take conductor number 10, that can carry 30 amps forever, can carry um, um, 550 amps for one second, and can carry, what was the amps before? Um, 200, 246, thank you, 246 for how long, for five, who cares, that's prep you my friends into the damage care for conductors, damage care for conductors, can I find how much current the conductor can carry for four amps, yep, piece of cake, you do flip the formula, same thing, instead of putting one here, put four, 10 amps, no problem, put 10 here. 50 amps, I mean, not 50 amps, 10 seconds, an hour, yep, no problem, divide this one by um, uh, 60 times 60, right? 60 seconds, 60 minutes, yep. Any comments, any questions about the withstand, the I squared, the I squared uh, uh, time? I squared T. Any comments, any questions? I'm going to give you guys five minutes break and I'm going to continue with that one. Just to stretch a little bit. <clears throat> Stand waiting again. Um, you would never do what I'm going to do in real life here, Jeff, my friend. To calculate the withstand waiting for a conductor, a conductor, a withstand, calculate it again. Joe, we have a software that can give you all this withstand rating for all these cables. They will give you a damage care for all the conductors. So you really don't have to do that. But here's what you have to understand. Um, 
if your conductor is bare, I want to emphasize it's a bare copper. Uh, they allow you to have one amp, and you can see you have one amp for five seconds. Withstand is typically five seconds for every 29.1 circular mil. So what the heck does that mean? Give me a conductor. Let's just say, give me a conductor that's um, a bare conductor. So let's say, let's say, I don't know if they make a bare conductor 500 kcm. Let's just say they make a bare conductor 500 kcm. I'm sure they do for grounding. I'm sure they do for grounding. So let's take this example. I have a 500 kcm bare copper. Bare copper conductor. And I need to find how much current, how much current this bare conductor can handle before it burns. It's a bare, no insulation. Bare, no insulation. Take this, look how easy that is. Now, all what you have to do is take the 500 kcm, divide this, I need somebody to do a calculation for me. 29.1 if. So take 500,000, 500,000 divided by 29.1. Could you please, anybody give me? That one, 500,000 divided, KCM, because K is 1,000, divided by 29.1, 4, 1. 17,000.882, okay, 0.2, would that work? 0.2 kilo M. So, can you guys see that? Uh, a 500 kcm conductor can carry for five seconds. Can I emphasize the word at five seconds? Can you guys see that? See how easy that is? For five seconds, you can carry this amount. Okay, the same conductor, the same conductor, the same conductor, this is all, only for five seconds. Now the same conductor, my friend, I'm gonna make it insulated. Insulated. Uh, let's go to the next page. We'll insulate. Any comments, guys? See, see how that easy that is? Let's go to that's if it's bare. If it's insulated, if it's insulated, I want you to ignore this number here. This is this number will get you how much current that copper start melting. The copper start melting. Do you want to wait until the copper melt or before the insulation melt? Okay, so the the number for the um um for the copper, so same thing. I have a 500, 500 KCM THHN, right? Copper, copper. How much current that this conductor can carry for five seconds? Okay, piece of cake. Um, Jeff, my friend, take the 500 KCM, Divide this number, this is I, the current, the short circuit, that withstand, actually the withstand current. This is called withstand current. Um, divided by the number that they use for copper is actually 42.24. 42.25, I'm sorry, 25 or 25, yep. Can anybody do, do the math for me? 500,000 divided by 42.25. 11,800 okay, kiloamps. I'm just going to make it after that, it doesn't matter. 11.8 kiloamps. I want to remind you, gentlemen, look at the bare conductor. Can you see how much current the same conductor bare carried? 17,000, right? 0.2. If you insulate it, how much current that baby carried? Short circuit current, withstand, 11. Anybody can tell why? If you have insulation, you worry about melting the insulation first and dissipation of the heat. If, if the conductor is insulated, it does not dissipate the heat fast. So you have to, it, it can't carry more current. So you can see an insulated conductor will carry less current short circuit than an uninsulated conductor. Any comments, any questions guys about that? That's basically the concept that they were trying to do. The aluminum has its own number too. Aluminum has its own number. Any comments, any questions? This number here that you see, 16.19, that's when the copper start melting. When the copper start melting. That's why we don't use it. The good news is all these numbers, you guys don't have to memorize them. The only thing that I say is when you have the software, all what you have to do, grab the conductor, 
four up, 500, and as you grab it, visually, graphically, the system will draw a line like this for you. That's your damage care. That's it. This line represents all the amps at different times. Can you get see amps at different times? Amps at different times. Amps at different times. Amps at different times. All the amps at different times that these conductors can handle. Any comments, any questions about the withstand rating and calculating withstand rating? Withstand rating. Okay. The second thing I'm going to, so this is the I square T. Any question about I square T, guys, and withstand the rating for conductors? The damage curve. So what you should remember when Chad is done, that every conductor has something called damage curve. Right? It's made out of the um, highest amount of short circuit that this conductor can handle for five seconds, typically. Right? And then, or for different times, time intervals, as a matter of fact. And then every equipment have a withstand rating. Every short, every fuse or circuit breaker have an interrupting rating. See the words that we use: interrupt versus withstand. Now, the, and everything that we did, guys, talk about the the heat energy. I squared T is energy. Now we talked about the second effect of short circuit is what force, magnetic force. The magnetic force, guys, that's a switch gear sitting there and shaking and shaking and shaking because of that magnetic current, because of a huge amount of current going through it, and it's flapping all over, right? Shake it, shake it because of the, the highest amount. How do they calculate the magnetic force? The smarter than Chad and Darren came up with this concept. You take the IP and square it. Okay, take on IP and square it. Here's the current. When I am at the short circuit, right? Uh, let's just say, I am right, look at this guys. I'm, this is my system going beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now look, at this point, I have a short circuit. Look what happened, bam, went all the way there, and bam, went down, that's what a short circuit. And then, and uh, then I, I went down to zero, right? Went down to zero, oops. Uh, I went all the way up, I have my short circuit, all the way down, and it starts cycling, cycling up and down. You take that peak, this is called the peak, I peak, for the short circuit. Can you guys see, it went way high for cycles, not for a whole long time, guys. This is one cycle. So you take the I peak and you square it, and that will get you the shaking force that's going to shake this equipment. Can you have a thumbs up, Chad? We understand that? Now remember, that circle here, that short circuit that you saw, only for one cycle, here's one cycle, oops, one cycle, and another two cycles, if you go another three cycles, now right here, it should go back to zero because circuit breaker should open. No more than three cycles should open. So you only allow, look at all this high voltage to go high current only for three cycles. Three cycles, how many seconds? One twentieth of a second. Not forever, guys, otherwise you fry a lot of equipment. Okay, now, the I peak um, is, uh, and the I square T guys, as a function of the following, Jeff, if you don't care about the well, whole desk, you're going to care, I know you're going to care about the following. Arc flash, arc blast, and destroying the equipment. The arc flash, guys, in any, any equipment is a function of the highest, the peak, that give you the blast, the huge blast that comes and blow up all this cover right through your chest, right, if you're not dressed up properly. And the arc flash, big ball of firing out of you. Now, did we get your attention? When you go in the field, um, there in my friend, and you start making uh, the big box somewhere, um, and they ask you, we have, we want you to do arc flash analysis. That's what they're talking about. They want you to find the amount of arc and the blast coming out of this arc, so you can you can label the panels with the proper PPE. Uh, personal protective equipment, every panel, and the arc, bo arc uh, boundaries, arc flash boundaries, um, touch hazard as well. So these are these two values, the peak as well as the thermal guys, will decide how much arc flash, arc blast is going to come out of this, this panel. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions?
So look what that does to you guys. Uh, the bus bars, uh, the contactors, the conductors, all these, they will be under a lot of stress, <laughs> magnetic stress because of the short circuit. Now don't forget that there's also thermal stress, the heat. So somebody's shaking you and baking you, basically. Shake and bake. Isn't that what shake and bake is? Right? Shake and bake. Easy to remember. Shake it, and you're baking it. So that's what you're doing to your equipment when you have an arc flash or any short circuit. You're shaking it and baking it. Shake and bake. Any comments, any questions? So all the stuff they're going to do with your friend Chad is going to decide the proper PPE, PPE, personal protective equipment that you need. And the arc flash boundary, is it two feet, four feet, one foot? Meaning if you enter, you have to put your suit. You guys have seen people work on aerojet equipment. But big suit um, with a hood and everything else so you don't burn yourself if there's an arc flash. So that's your magnetic force responsible for... Um... So summarize, my friend, the whole magnetic force. Magnetic force is also a function of the time as well as the as the peak, the peak and the time. Um, so the damage that you're gonna we'll, we'll get into these one. Um, so summarize, you're gonna take two forces. Uh, one of them is I P and square it. That's your magnetic force. That's how we calculate it. I squared times um, I squared times T. The difference between I squared, uh, this I and this I, guys, is the following. Here's the curve. The curve, here's the top and down, right? This one is the top. This one is the average, the RMS. RMS. The RMS value. So that's a big deal. The, the, the one that decided the heat is the RMS value. The one that de decided the magnetic force is the peak. Do you guys remember when you were in basic, when Jerry was talking about when they have 120, it's an RMS value, root mean square value, it's a statistical value equivalent to a DC. That's what an AC is. The peak is the peak. The peak is the highest point that you reach in the voltage, uh, in the current in this case. So, bottom line, your equipment will be shaken and baking based on the following. How long will you allow the how much of a current? Your equipment will be shaken and baking based on how much current you allow to sit inside your equipment and for how long. Makes sense, right? How much, how long when you shake and bake your equipment? I'll talk about the tab rules, guys. I have a nice uh, sheet for you about the tab rules, conductors. So because of all of this, the NDC code book, guys, because of all this, the NDC code book, says every conductor must be protected with an overcompletion device. So, okay, so what does that mean, Chad? This means I have my five, my 400 amp um, fuse or circuit breaker in this case, my 400 amp circuit breaker right ahead of my 500 KCM conductor, right? And this conductor, uh, this is rated for, let's just say 85 kilo amp. This conductor can, can handle, how much did we say? Uh, we did the calculation for it, was it 11? 11 11.8. This can handle 11.8 kilo amps at five seconds, right? So conductor can handle 11.8. This will trip at three, at one twentieth of a second. Am I protected? My circuit breaker will trip at twentieth of a second. My conductor can handle five, up to five seconds. So, um, so my conductor is protected in this case. My conductor is protected. Now for, uh, for one second, for one second, this probably would can handle 80, remember we did I think 80,000 amp at one second. I bet you if you go to one twentieth of a second, this conductor can handle maybe 120,000 amp at one twentieth of a second. Again, I did not do the math. You can't do the math one twentieth. What I care is about this number. It's higher than this number. We're good. So the circuit breaker will trip faster, fast enough to protect me from burning my conductors. 
everything, all the mess that I'm showing, here's how we're going to show it in the graphic. Very easy, very simple. Here's my circuit breaker coming this way. We're going to show it on, on Wednesday, guys. That's my circuit breaker. Chad, where's my damage curve? Here's your damage curve. Is, this is my 500 kcm. This is my five, uh, 400 amp, my 400 amp circuit breaker. Can you see that? Are they touching? No. Is the circuit breaker to the left of that red curve? Yes, we're good. All this junk that I wrote here, graphically, look how nice, it, graphically, you can look at it and you see, it. yep, I am protected. See why STM is good? Or any other software guys that you use? Graphically, instead of getting onto all this speed and amps, graphically, at every point, I can tell that the circuit breaker, if I have a short circuit right here, I'm gonna hit the circuit breaker anywhere here. And my highest short circuit is right here, so I'm not going to get into this area anyway. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? So that's my uh, short circuit. Every conductor has to have an overcompletion device ahead of it. We talked, this just talks about the ambicity, guys, of the conductors and so forth. Um, okay, the last thing I want to show you guys. We talk so really summarize to summarize the whole thing is really the most important thing is the magnetic force and uh, I square T. Let me get you into the a couple of uh, pictures in the library. Really nice, I think. Okay, so we got into. Okay, we got we talked about the shorts the normal operation of a circuit. If you guys leave Dunwoody without knowing that, refund from your friend Chad or donuts. That's your normal operation of a circuit. This is the overload condition. You add loads. So you can see you double the current value on the system. We talked about this. Short circuit condition, you basically bypass the load. The load would become equivalent to zero, almost zero, right? Then you plug it into all your equipment here and you got yourself 20 and this 20, almost 27,000 amp. The fuse have to be rated for that or you're doomed. Uh, I don't know why this, here's a ground fault one phase um don't ask me why this is showing here open circuit we talked about the open circuit in a three-phase system is bad okay this is um current limiting fuse i want to go over one more time of current limit fuses guys um I'll show you one example if i have a current limiting fuse right here i want to show you by example and i have right here the short circuit right here is 10,000. Can you guys see 100,000 amps? Can you guys see 100,000 amps right in this point? Can you guys follow up with me? And this fuse is 60 amp. This is 60 amp fuse. Let's do it for 60 amp fuse. And okay, so can you guys see that? So by many, this is all for manufacturer. Follow up, 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 up until you hit the 60 amp fuse. When you hit the 60 amp fuse, you're going to go to the left. All the way down, 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 band here, cool, and then you're going to go down, 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 and, and that will lower it down to 4K. So by the time you reach here, it's actually 4,000 amp. From 100,000 amp into a 4,000 amp, that's current limiting fuses for you. Why do they limit them? Because they open within a quarter of a cycle. Can you guys see that? So now, if my piece of equipment here, Suppose that this equipment withstand is 10 kilo amp. I want somebody to look at this and tell me if my piece of equipment here is rated for 10,000 amps and I have on the line side of the fuse, I have a thousand. The fuse is going to only let through four. Am I good? Yeah, I'm good. We're only letting through what? Four. Yes, it's 100,000 amp. If you don't have a current limit fuse, this 100,000 amp will dump right through your panel or your equipment then this equipment have to be 100,000. Any question guys about current limit fuses? One more example. Suppose that you have, um, uh, this is another 60 amp. Look at this, 40. Suppose I have, this is now changed to 40 kilo amp. Okay, I'm gonna go right in here, all the way up, a still 60 amp fuse, all the way to the right and down. That will limit this one to 3,000. Now we're even better, 3,000 amp. Okay. 
And the last one here, I don't know what would that be. If this is 10, 20, uh, shall we say this is 15 here? Okay, so let's use the different, just give you how the same views can limit diff a different value. Come over here, go all the way, all the way down to, let's just say this is was, uh, uh, where am I here? One, okay, 10. So let's just say this 15 for the sake of that. 15. So here's my 15k kilo amp. I'm limiting my 15 kilo amp into a 21. A 20, 2.1 kilo amp. Can you guys see what the current limiting fuse is? I need thumbs up, Chad. We completely understand. Why do the current limiting fuses do this type of work, guys? Because here's what they do. Remember that short circuit? Here's my oops, my system. Come on. My system works this way. Here's my system. Um, take this. Here's my system is up and running. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All of a sudden, beautiful. Now, beautiful. All of a sudden, I have a short circuit condition. Look at the short circuit condition coming this way all the way up to here, right? Okay. And it continues. Of course, it goes lower a little bit, but it continues this way. This is what a short circuit. This is. Can you guys see that how nice the voltage was? Then all of a sudden the current went way up. Now, if you have a current limiting, the current limiting will take half of the trip at half of a cycle, a quarter of a cycle. So the only energy that's going to get into your system is this part. This one is a quarter of cycle. A quarter of a cycle. That's why it limits it down to these values. A quarter of a cycle. Now, if that if there wasn't a, if that was not a current limit fuses, Joe, guess what's going to happen? It's going to get one cycle, two cycle, three cycle. All this energy, three cycles, from three cycles down to a quarter of a cycle, that's a big jump. That's why you have your current limit fuses. Any comment? Any questions about current limit fuses? Bussman has tons of them. If you are faced, Andrew, with a situation where you have to solve a problem because you have a short circuit condition, what do you do? Current limit fuses. Where do you get this nice graphic, Chad? Where do I get this nice graphic? Manufacturers. You see, you can see that these are for LPN RK. RK fuses 250 and 600. 250 and 600. Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? What these values, these are the actual values of the size of the fuse, all the way up to 600 amp fuel. What is this line? This is the line that, by manufacturer, can you guys see that line? That determines the, how much you can uh, limit, how much current you can limit, how much you can limit. The last thing I want to show, guys, is the peak. Can you, uh, if you look at this, so this one is, um, so you, you, you came out of here. If you go here, all the way up, and you go here, that's how much current you're gonna, you're gonna, the peak. The peak is gonna be so high, but then if you continue, so that's, um, if you continue, and one of, one of them is gonna be right here. So long story short, also it will limit the peak. It will limit the peak. The RMS as well as the peak. So who cares? Now you have less energy heat inside your panel and less shaking and baking. You're shaking and baking less. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? I can't emphasize the, the value here, rubbing it down to this value. I can't remember, I can't read this one, what is it? 2,000, 200,000 here, rubbing it down into 10,000. That's the peak, the IP. Any comment, any questions, guys, about the current limit fuses? Current limit fuses. So that's your current limit fuses for you. Now next week, when I uh, on Wednesday, guys, we'll start doing current limit fuses. I hope you will be with your friend Chad. Okay, moving in to here. Now, this curve, there, my friend, came from the manufacturers of cables. This is the withstand rating of the conductor. The withstand rating of the conductor. The withstand rating of a conductor will get you will get you these values. The withstand rating of the conductor will get you will get you these values. Um, so these are short circuit thousands of amps. The top can you guys see that right here is the kilo amp. Right here is 
A W G. Everybody can see that the A W G on this side, kilo M on the other side. Let's take an example. Okay, with standard rating, I want to take one example that's uh, interesting, a quarter. Um, I want to grab this one here. Can you guys go with me? Everybody can see that, please. Um, let's uh, let's take uh, four out. Anybody likes four out? I want to go look at four out. Jeff, four out is good. Let's take four out. I'm going to take four out right here. I want to follow it on the curve. Four out, four out, four out, four out, up to this point. Okay. Now for this point, <clears throat> uh, Darren, do you want to set your uh, circuit breaker to trip at a hundred cycles? Do you? Do you want it to sit 100 cycles? Say, that's a lot. That's a, an eternity. Say, Aaron said, yeah, I can rest here. Bring it on. So if it's to sit at 100 cycles, this conductor can carry only 8,000 amp. Short circuit, 8,000 amp. If you put more than 8,000 amp on it, you burn it. OK, take another one. So now, Chad, Somebody said, well, are you crazy, Chad? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go back and make a trip at, uh, let's just say, uh, three, two cycles, typically two cycles, right here. So follow it with me up, 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 up to where is the two cycles? A half, a one, a two, this one, right? This is the two cycle. Can you guys see the cycle? Two cycles. Can you guys see how much current at two cycles this can carry? 60,000 amps. We went from 8,000 amps into 60,000 amps by tripping the circuit breaker fast. By tripping the circuit breaker fast. It gets even more interesting. If you go, let's just go to the, say I'm going to trip it. Uh, I don't know if I can reach this one. Have a cycle. Let's just go one cycle. I'm going to go all the way to one cycle, Chad. I care less. I want that, I'm going to trip in one cycle. Can you guys see one cycle here? One cycle can give you all the way up to here. So let's just say that was 95, 95 kilo amps. So gentlemen, you went from this one as, what did we say? This is one cycle. This one was, um, uh, this one was two cycles. And this one was an eternity. This one was a hundred cycles. Andrew? If you uh, or anybody else, or Aaron, if you guys don't know what how to measure time in cycles, very easy. Just divide that number by 60. That will give you the seconds. Okay? Divide these numbers. So that's one time wise. This is 160, oops, one, one over 60th of a second. This one, um, two over 60 is what? 120, uh, two over 60 is one thirtieth of a second. This one is um, 100 divided by 60 is what? 10 divided by 6, 10. 1 point, 1 point, that's 1.4, good enough, 1.4 seconds, 1.6, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7 seconds, cool, we're not talking about hours, we're not talking about even minutes, any question guys about the values that you can get out of the conductors, so, so uh, Joe, my friend, in the high voltage industry, in higher than 600 volt, they actually size the conductors based on how much short circuit they want to handle. So now, this is very new to a lot of you guys. When you do short circuit, when you size conductors, we size conductor based on the full load, right? Could, is it continuous? Yep, 1.25. Then, voltage drop? Yep. And then we size based on bundling? Yep. And we choose the largest conductor, right? Add one more short circuit. You have to size the conductor based on how much short circuit the conductor can handle. This becomes a big deal, guys, when you have 4,000 amps and higher, if you haven't heard of it. Or if you have high voltage, higher than 600 volt, major, major. Any comments, any questions? So this curve is a curve that decided the size of the conductor based on the short circuit. This is equivalent to 310.15B16. You guys remember 310.15B16 take a 4 out and tells you 4 out can carry 4 out can carry how much current? Uh, 200 and uh, how much current 4 out can carry? 250 I think. 
Anybody? Anyone? 250? 2.30. That's close enough. 2.30 M. So 310 B16 can tell you that the, the four watt can carry 230, but it doesn't tell you how much short circuit this conductor can handle. For lower than 600 volt, um, Jeff, not a big deal. You go higher than 600 volt, medium voltage, believe it or not, you spot sizing based on tables. So the table will give you a size 500. Then you go to the short circuit and say, oh, by the way, because your fuse or relay is set at 100 cycle, you must use instead of 500, 900 kcm. So the sitting of the fuse decided the size of the conductor. I did this one for training for uh, 16 hours and I had an old timer electrician. He said, Chad, I've been in the industry for 30 years and I've never heard about sizing conductors based on short circuit. 30 years. I said, have you ever dealt with medium voltage? He said, no. I said, that's why. So you might work all your life not hearing about the sizing it based on short circuit. Um, but if the minute that you touch anything higher than 600 volt, that's a major effect, major effect. You start to actually resize based on that to the medium voltage. How much short circuit? How do you sit your relays, over connection the relays on the medium voltage circuit breaker will decide what size of conductor you're gonna use at the end of it. Not the load, not the load anymore. In the low voltage, the load decide 90%. In the medium voltage, the load decide only 10% of what we size. The 90% goes of how much short circuit you're gonna like excel when they size all the transmission distribution line, the back of their mind, the short circuit. And they have voltage drop too. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, that cable, very interesting. This is the nice graphic, the current limited fuse guys, how it works. Oops. What did I do, Chad? Did I F? Okay, so did I close it? All right, right here. I just, uh, okay. I'm gonna erase it, buddy. I'm gonna only do, there you go. Cool. Okay, this is basically, guys, a, a quarter of a cycle and how much current you can see is a available short circuit way at the top. And you can trip within a quarter of a cycle. So from here to here is what you what you are tripping. You can trip a quarter or even less. That's what current limiting fuse for you. Look at that. They're limiting even less, less, less than um, than a quarter. Who cares? That's when you have a short circuit. Then see that VFD, not the VFD, that uh, PLC there. This means that PLC is going to stay intact after you short circuit. If you allow all this to get in, yep, the electrician's face still there. Nobody got killed, but that PLC completely charted. You don't care about that? Changing the whole uh, VFD, uh, VFD or PLCs, um, then you don't worry about current limit fuses. That's the advantage of current limit fuses, guys. It allows you to limit them. Look, in this case, it was a 10,000, the peak, and limit them all the way to what? 10. From uh, 30,000, I mean, to 10. And the duration, the time, is also limit the time. So you're going to hear, see all this one when it comes to the short circuit and current limiting. Okay, the last thing on my, my, my agenda to do, my friends, before I let you go on a, oops, on a Monday, oh, um, on Okay, as uh, the rules, the tab rules, tab rules. This is one of the nicest uh, way of summarizing the tab rules, okay? Let's go summarize the tab. There are two tab rules commonly used in the industry, guys. Um, I want you guys to look at this. I have a 600 amp, 600 amp feeder, um, protecting a 600 amp conductor, that fat fluffy one. And from there, I'm tabbing a 60 amp, um, fuse disconnect up to 10 feet and I'm also tabbing a 25 amp conductor up to 200 feet and here's the rule number one 200 amp up to 25. Uh, 25 feet thank you here's the rules for 10 I'm just going to go over the rules number one I'm going to highlight it um, 
The cap, if it's 10 foot cap, this means you can't go more than 10 feet. Makes sense, right? Number two, not less than the calculated load. So at the bottom, I don't know if we can use them so we can. Can you guys read them? Like this? Okay. So, what? Oops. This. Okay. So here's the 10. First, it can't be more than 10. Here's more than 10. Calculated load cannot be more than, um, uh, not less than the calculated load to be. So right here, if I'm tabbing a, a 60 amp, so the calculated load here that's going to be fed from here have to match the conductor, right? So if I'm tabbing a 60 amp, is it a 60 amp? Um, 60 amp, it's a 60 amp. This cannot be more than 60 amp. The load, cool, is my load, not less than the amp rating of the over compression device. It has to land with an over compression device of 60. Can you guys see that? Not less than one quarter. I can't read it. Not, not less than one tenth of the over compression device. This is, this one here is very easy. Take the 600 divided by 10 equal what? 60 amp. This is the smallest conductor that you can tab out of this feeder. That's number, that's when we get into um, the smallest conductor that you can tab out of this feeder is 60 amps. That's a rule. And then the next highest standard permitted in 200 R, not permitted and shall be in raceways. Also, you have to put them in raceways. You have to put them in raceways like, like you see, the conductors have to be in raceways. Any comments? Really, the rule is, for 10 feet, I can tap up to one tenth of the feeder. So, take this. If I had, if that was a thousand, how much can I say this fuse was a thousand? How much can I tap out of this thousand feeder? Take a thousand divided by 10 equal what? A hundred. A hundred amp chair. Please, okay. Okay, so that's for the 10 feet. That's your 10 feet. Any question about the 10 feet, please? Any question about the 10 feet? Any question about the 10 feet? Piece of cake? Let's go to the 25 feet. 25 feet is piece of cake too. I want to remind you that the, the top here is 600. The 25 feet, rule number one, can you guys see it's, it cannot be more than 25. Duh, it says 25 foot tab. Not less than one third of the over compaction device. That's piece of cake. It says you cannot tab. So I have 600 amps, divide by three, 100, uh, 200 amps, right? 200 amps. 200 amps. Meaning I can't tab a conductor smaller than 200 amps. Be why? Because the rule says one third of the over compaction device. One third of the over compaction device. Then the others are, are cool, guys. You always have to end up with the conductor have to match the load at the end. And you have to put them in a conduit to protect them. Is there a limit to how many taps you can put on that? Uh, you can't tab a tap, but you can tab. Uh, the limit is the overload compaction calculation because ultimately, this is the poor man's way of doing business. Ultimately, uh, the, the, the load, how much you're going to go by the load, right? So that right now we're tapping this conductor here and tapping this conductor. By the way, why would you use a tap? cheap equipment instead of having a main panel this is your main panel 600 amp main panel is right here a gutter with bunch of wires and logs and tabs on them so the, why would you use a tapping system cheaper installation of system instead of using a main panel i can solve this problem by having main panel right take this here's my main and then here's one two Three, one, two, three, four, four. Here's my main panel, and the rest is down here. Right? That's what you guys did with Chad. That's what the engineers would do. Better, more reliable. Which? What's the difference between this and this? This is better, more reliable, um, safer. Uh, what's the problem? More expensive. Contractors like it this way. A lot of contractors because it's cheaper, affordable. Not cheaper, but more affordable. But the problem is, the problem, what happens if you have a, I guess the same thing, if you have a short circuit right in here, you're going to use the main. Um, I guess the same thing, if you have a short circuit right inside the panel, you lose the main. So this is done because of affordability and cheaper. Cool. So here's my conductors. Now, uh, can I come down here again and have another disconnect and tab and a third disconnect and a tab? And what's the limit, Chad? 
what's the limit in all these? Let me just, the limit is the load calculation. When you guys do the load calculation, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take all the load here, and here, and here, and here, here, and here, and size the teaser. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six modes. Remember how we did the load calculation for chat, guys, and you size the main panel? You're gonna take all the loads, the loads, not the amp, not the 200 amp, the actual load. You size them in. Cool? Based on this, if you have left over, then you can add more. But typically, first you size them in, and then you start tapping them. In real life, uh, Jamie, my friend, if you go to a field like this, and you say, I want to add a disconnect, can I add it? Yes, be careful though. What they, what they do is they go monitor the current here, monitor the current I, um, how much current and, and, and volt amp this panel is doing over a period of time, say a month, and if um, peak, and they, they monitor and then they collect, the engineers will collect the data, analyze it, and they say, you know what, I know it's a 600 amp feeder, but really we're only pulling 400 out of that, and I can prove it to you, then I can add another 100 amp or 200. Aftermath. Design-wise, you add all these loads and you size them in. Any comments, guys? Any question for your friend Chad? Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So that's a rule, the tab rules. I do calculation for these, not, not this in the, in the industrial, but it's, I, it's really nice, uh, nice um, page that can get you the uh, calculation. Okay, that's all what I want to show. Any comments, any questions? All right. Thank you. I hope this will help us, guys, on Wednesday when we do this. Yeah.